your specialism in fatigue, I know, was born out of some of your own struggles whilst you were a medical student. Uh, it's, it's funny. People ask me, what's a nice doctor like you doing in a field like chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia? <laughs> it's kind of, you know, it's one of those things that you, as those of you who have the idea, the illness have realized most doctors simply don't do. And what you'll find is that most practitioners who specialize in this area, it's because either they had the disease or a family member did. And, you know, I remember back in 1975, I was in medical school, uh, had finished college basically in two years, two and a half years. I was paying my own way through, was rushing, rolling through med school quickly. That was one of the easiest things in my life, working full time to pay my way through med school. I was working as a nurse in children's hospital. All of that were the easiest parts of my life. Um, my family is an old Auschwitz family. My mom was in Auschwitz. Most of my family died in Auschwitz. And they all imploded emotionally. And I made the mistake of trying to be the peacemaker. Then I got this nasty viral infection. So on the context of a lot of background stress, there's a nasty viral infection. Basically knocked me out of the game. Um, I could not function even six weeks later. I was non-functional. Um, I had a drop out of medical school. Um, and since I couldn't work, I was homeless sleeping in parks. Um, it was as if the universe put a holistic homeless medical school sign on my park bench. And as a good Jewish boy, I wanted to be a healer since I was as long, far back as I can remember, I always knew what I wanted to be, which meant being a physician. I didn't know there were any other pathways. Uh, but I met herbalists, I met nutritionists, I met energy workers, I met a naturopath. I didn't know there was such a thing as a naturopath. Um, I met all these people while I was homeless on my park bench and on the road. And they taught me the bits and pieces of what I needed to do to be able to fully recover, uh, go back to medical school. And I have been researching, writing, and treating uh, these conditions for the last 45 years, um, making effective treatment available for everybody, everybody, not just those with money and the rest, uh, is my goal. That's been the name of the game, mission statement, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's been a blast. It was funny, but the COVID, the, the five amounts of budget for research at the NIH is $12 million last year, which in terms of the number of people and severity of the illness is one of the lowest amounts that they allocate. It's, it's one the 40th, the normal and appropriate amount of research dollars. But last week, they allocated $1.15 billion. Oh, they did. Wow. Because it's COVID, post-COVID, <laughs> throw money at it. You know? So suddenly the Cinderella stepchild illness <laughs> getting all of this research funding, which is, uh, thank you, COVID, you know. <laughs> <laughs> COVID had to be good for something, didn't it?